Good morning, folks. Today, it's time for a bit of a deja vu because today we are back on the van. Right, before we dive into all the new stuff I need to get sorted, let me run some footage now which shows you what I've been up to over the past few months when I've had time. Well, we're about two years on from where we left off. We're gonna try and finish the camper van this bank holiday weekend so we can actually use it before we probably sell it. So I'm getting all these cabinets in and uh, all these doors, sorry, that I made last. Okay, well, let's just see if mummy can park. Yeah, you're okay. So these are the wooden shaker doors I made up last year. We're going to get them fit today, hopefully. Yeah, because I've built the face frame, which is a nice look, it's just a bit more fussy when it comes to hinges. I wanted to use inset clo soft closing hinges. I've now had to put this batten on the back of here. Finally got that glued and screwed so we can fix our hinges to that. Now I usually use inset concealed hinges, uh, just soft closed ones, which work fine you still need to put the little plinth or whatever behind these ones come with a little riser block to make up for that they seem okay they're not blum or anything like that they're just some unbranded one but there's some adjustability so we should be okay so they'll fit so the block is flush with the back side of our face frame Will it fit? Feels like it's just about on there. Yeah, that's better. I should have made these gaps smaller. When I made these, I think I shrunk it by three mil each side. Didn't need to be that much. It's gone all the way, that one. Just noticed a couple of these aren't quite deep enough for the cup of the hinge, so I'm just gonna put the jig back on there, just drill them down that extra two or three mil, you can see there. That's all those done. There's a little bit of fine tuning to do. Of course, we still need to put in a stop on the other side. I'll probably just do one in the middle at the bottom and then that will close nicely. Right, next up, I've got 14 doors as well. I made all these last year and we need to work out firstly where they're going and also whether we want to do drawers or cupboards. It was all going to be drawers, but I'm not sure I've got the patience for that now and uh, doors will cut down on weight. Ah. Toothpaste ones. So as you can see, we've now got all of our cabinets pretty much finished, apart from a couple of small ones down the bottom. The top cabinets all work really well. This one houses all the electrics and solar control, and then the rest are just storage really. But these were the hardwood or poplar stained 
cabinets, they came out really well. I'm really pleased with how they finished up. But the step was the other thing we got done. So you see this step here, which basically takes you from the level of the conversion at the back up to the cab. That serves a couple of purposes. One is just to tidy up that threshold, but also when we turn the seat, you end up somewhere to put your feet. So when you spin the front chairs, if you don't have a step here of some sort, your feet dangle because of the height difference. So that was one of the reasons for making sure that when we turn these to have a central table, that people can rest their feet. Now you will see on some more conventional conversions that people do this step much larger. And they actually curve it and carry this whole area around at the same height as the cab level. That makes sense because the seats can end up at the same height. However, one of the main designs for this van is to make it a usable van. And to do that, we've maintained a full width sliding door. All of these seats clip out and we've got a full loading bay there that you can get a forklift in, you can get a pallet in, you could help someone move house. It's just a usable space. Or if you didn't have any passengers and it was just two of you, then you could put another seat along the back or you could bring bikes or anything you need in here. And just to explain, if you haven't seen the rest of the build, that's exactly what we've got at the back here. And then later on in this video or in the next video, I'll be sharing that. So these pods, the whole rear bed system comes out and the bunks, and that creates this big load bay in the back. Because in my eyes, if you're gonna pay for your insurance for the year, your tax for the year, and all the other overheads of having a vehicle, you may as well be able to use it. And a lot of conversions, have a solid back inside the wall or if a conventional motorhome literally has one pedestrian door at the side. And if you wanted to go and pick up some plywood or if you wanted to help someone move house or go and pick up something from Ikea, your van is useless even though it's a big vehicle. So this van, the payload is still high. You know, we've kept things down to a minimum as far as weight goes. The whole back of the van comes out, the whole front of the van comes out and we've got a big, um, cargo space still that goes from the back doors to the front is four meters over four meters but of course into the cab you can go up to five meters almost so I've had you can easily get 4.8 meter lengths of timber in here um, anything else you might want to put in a van you can still use this as a van and still have you know nearly a ton of payload to deal with although we will need to go and get it weighed up now I've finished off the last few bits anyway back to today we are needing to finish off the step. Now at present moment, this isn't actually fixed in. It's pretty snug in, it's not gonna move. Um, but if you did need to get to the cables below there, you could do. There's not any joins, can't, I don't think, under there, so you shouldn't need to. But one thing is, if you want to put a heater in this fan, some people can fit, you can fit them either underneath or you could box out a section here, but you might want to run the blower, you know, the hot air blower in this cavity. There's enough space there. So that's why I've left it. So that could be an upgrade in the future, but what we need to do is just put a few screws along the bottom into the batten, and then this job is kind of done. Albeit that we need to stain our front a little bit of trim here. So let me share with you the couple of remaining jobs that I've got to get done this week. One job is to box out the bottom of the seat base. As you can see here, We've got two leisure batteries under there. Works great, perfect spacing and everything. We covered that in the video years ago. Then you can see there's some inline fuses here. One is for the solar, one is for the fridge, and one is for the main system. I want a plywood kind of box this off and then I've got some black stretch carpet just so that neatens it off on both sides. Under here is the toolkit and jack and all that stuff. I also need to just lip the front step here because we've done a insulated floor system on here we've got like a, a step up now the kitchen is pretty much done we've fitted some hinges use these little pop out you know the standard motorhome deal i was gonna be more fancy on it but i think it's just fine so those just give us nice easy access they're cupboards not drawers if someone wanted to in the future they could fit drawers and that would be just fine for now we've got a basket. Fridge has been in since day one, no problems there. When we're not using it, it's just left on that vent uh, 
attach so it just leaves it open a little bit so it doesn't get moldy or anything in there. And then the oven is the oven. And I'm really pleased we went for an oven separate from the hob, but we can do a whole tour video in the future. So the last thing to do here is to put in this dummy strip, which at one point I thought I'd have like a little pull out tiny storage bit for sponges and cloths and all that sort of stuff. But there's really not a huge amount of space there. If you're feeling creative, you could do that. But what it does mean is you can get out and you can just about access bits at the back of the oven if you needed to. So I'm gonna get a magnet, I think a couple of magnets um, and some a block of wood there and that'll just neaten it off and it just gives the same sort of shaker style to that. Right, down here by the door, we've got to put a catch on this cubby. This is the first aid kit in there. So that needs a standard catch. In here, we need to come up with a little bit of a system for latching this as well. This in actual fact is a toilet. By lifting this up, that hinges up and reveals a porta potty. And look, it's not the most glamorous, fully plumbed in shower en suite that some people have in their vans. Most of those people are, are couples, you know, they or, or even single people who are just looking to live a bit of luxury inside the van. When you've got five of you in a van, the story's a bit different. And actually, you can't justify wasting that much space to have a permanent shower enclosure in most situations. Some people do. But that's, you know, if you want a flexible van like this, where we've got the ability to empty everything out and use it for storage and use it for transporting things, then blocking off a whole section of the van for a shower wasn't an option but if you can a little toilet is just oh i mean the fact you'd have to get up in the middle of the night and walk across the campsite with the kids i mean it really is 99 percent of the time this is just for the kids so the fact that we can have that in there it's pretty easy maintenance you know once in a while you might have to empty it and yes that's normally me that draws the short straw but it's not the end of the world it's easy to do and i'd rather do that once a trip than you know every night having to go back and forth because you know what happens if you've got kids you go for one trip with one of them as soon as you get back another one wakes up and yeah that's it's a relay race all evening all night a little slot here again we've got a door made up probably just going to hinge it um, again you could have a slide out here and finally we need to finish the doors on the bed pods now the bed pods are two sections underneath mattresses and they've got quite a lot of storage inside them. The original idea for this one was to make this the wardrobe so it was going to be a big meter long pull out with all of our clothes in. Still an option but I'm not going to get around to that. A little upgrade for a future owner. At some point I'll do a video on the bunks because we just get emails all the time on it. It's not rocket science but it would be good to give some feedback after using them for you know three years and we've got one the other one to come back in here at the back of the van i really wanted to do something unique with these doors and how we dealt with the windows but i chickened out and what i've gone for is just conventional van curtains now i'm not sure i actually filmed this so apologies but i bought these universal van curtains from kiravans i'll put a link below and they come with the tracks this set i cut in half and that's why we've got, they just come in from one side rather than a pair. And they come all the way across. And I've got some magnets. They're on the front of the van at the moment. And just where the light creeps in a little bit here, two magnets on there is perfect. That's all you need. And then I've made up some door cards with plywood and carpeted those. And it's not as fancy as how I did the front window. I trimmed out. I kind of created a reveal and panelled and then put a window sill in and I was thinking about doing this at the back but because they're brown windows it's not as easy but I've used the same curtain system here this is a full set so these ones join in the middle and they're fully black out so they're black on one side grey on the inside but I think they're reversible and these ones are clipped on at the sides there so you don't have a gap here you don't have a gap here it's all good these are little magnets that we use and until recently we've always just had some black fabric 
and every night just put a piece of fabric and, and use magnets and to be honest three years we've managed but it's nice to have curtains now and especially as we're going to be selling the van soon it's a lot easier to explain how to use curtains we just don't need to explain but right, this was not meant to turn into a tour video because that's to come in the future so as you saw i just glued and taped this on that means i've got no holes from nails to fill so it's quite an easy way to go With vans, it's always the tiny little junctions where nothing's square, everything's got a curve, it's not plumb, it's not straight, it's not right angle, and you end up with these weird junctions. So it takes a bit of head scratching, but you gradually get there. Ever so slightly lighter, we could put another coat on, but I'm happy with that. Doesn't stand out much now. Okay, finished our little door over here. To be honest, doing overlay doors would have been way, way easier. Doing all these inset shaker doors. While in my mind, I prefer the inset sort of face frame design. And up here, in the same way, so we've got that visible frame. It just means that you've got to be really precise. If these were overlay, then if they were slightly off, this gap, you know, you have to get consistent. And of course, also, you need to make sure you've got a stop. You can see I've just put a little strip in the corner or block, and you need something there for it to close against. I'm not sure it's worth the hassle on all these small units down here. I could have done them a lot easier. So, look, this is one of those things that I made up as I went along. There are probably better ways to configure our emergency toilet, but it slots in. The flush is basically just a, a, pull, a lever that pulls out to open up the hole. And that's why I've notched out that and it, I've made it so it just clears this step. I'm not gonna open it now. Uh, but I needed to put this bit on here just so our door closes down, swings in and slots in neatly. That bit of beach, I might just leave. Just put a bit of wax on it rather than painting it white. So this should now stop against there. And we'll probably just put a magnet in there. Another job done. So we're slowly getting there. Finished off the staircase. This is, we call this the staircase because the kids use it to get up to the top bunks. Um, these are permanently fixed on, these sections of oak, whereas this one is obviously the lid. This is mainly where we store a little bin bag and also this table leg, which slots into the floor at the front. 
so we kind of just leave that right at the back in there. And then our kitchen, I've just put in some screws on the side just to fix our face frame in, so I've got a bit of filling and painting to do there tomorrow. This section, our little dummy panel, all I've done is just put in two magnets and two screws so it's in and it really doesn't move now, it's kind of wedged and magnetised, so if we needed to we can still pop that out to get access in there. Once I've picked up some sealant and some more trim, I will be emptying the van of all of its internals. So that's the front seats and the back, the back pods. Then I can go through it and snag all the paint. These Ford seats have worked really well. Um, I know when we first fitted them, people were a little bit doubtful, but I've seen endless people go on to fit them in their own van. So it seems to be a really good option. And the fact that they come with those mounting brackets works well as well just easy to clip them in it's a bit like having a people carry you can clip out all of these seats and you just end up with such a huge space to load into the van Hello. all right here with the pier i got a little bit carried away with emails it's a little bit dark now So I'm going to pack all this in and we might have to leave it here for today's video.